What up, what up, this is Patrick Hayes, and in this video, I want to talk about my magical wake up morning routine. And I wanna share this with you as a means for you to potentially be inspired to discover some sort of wake up routine that works for you, that really puts you into the kind of frame that helps you succeed in life, helps you to live a more joyful life, and helps you to be the person that you wanna be. So one of the very first things that I do when I wake up in the morning is I feel into the vibration that I'm in in association with my dreams. Some of you may have better or worse dream recall, but one of the things that I really noticed was that when I wake up early in the morning, that whatever dreams I've been having have a residue in my energy field, and I can feel that in my energy field. And so if I get up and just run out and don't pay attention to that, then whatever residue is in my field is going to stay in my field and it's going to affect my day. So that can be a great thing if I've had great dreams, but oftentimes I process in my dreams. And I think this is common for a lot of people. And sometimes the dreams and the vibrations that they leave in me are not the best. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to clear any residue from dreams that are not in the highest alignment with who I want to be and how I want to feel. So in the early morning when I first wake up, one of the first things I do is I sit there and I just feel into, remember all of my dreams, um, get understand what the vibration is and where they're coming from and how it feels. So what I do is I feel into that and then I compare it with my set point frequency or the frequency that I choose to be in when I go throughout my day and I transmute it. Now there's different ways of doing this. One way that I like to do it is using Sergio Magana's method, which is you, in short, I would really go and reference the book. The book is called The Toltec Dreaming Secrets if you wanna learn how to clear it. But essentially what you do is you imagine the part of the dream that you can remember, you imagine it turn into an orange smoke and then, or an orange flame, and then it turns into a dragon and then that dragon, you move through your body and you move it to clear all of the energy from your blood and from your bones. And you just go through that visualization process. And that's been quite powerful for me. But even before I knew about that, I was essentially doing the same thing by just feeling into the energy and really just kind of like smiling my way uh, to purification. So the next thing I do after clearing my dreams is I go and I create a cleansing drink for myself. And the drink that I make changes depending on the season, depending on how I'm feeling, just depending on the rotation that I happen to be in at that point. But what I'm making right here is vitamin C and MSM. And this is a really, really potent detoxing drink that helps make your cells more permeable and it just helps things move, it reduces inflammation. And it's a great way to start the day. Um, and, and I like to do this in the morning time because in the morning is when your body's naturally cleansing. Um, you, can, you can feel this like you know in your mouth, you can feel all the detoxification that's gone on in your mouth um, as it's been detoxing your lungs and other things throughout the night and that's why your mouth is more foul in the morning and you wanna brush your teeth. Um, but this process, while you're sleeping, and then after you've digested your food and your stomach's empty, this is when your body starts going through a detox pro process. So I kinda help this process out, and I drink some sort of detoxing drink in the morning. There's a lot of different things you can drink. Sometimes I do um, uh, activated charcoal. Sometimes I do lemon water. Um, and it really, it really just kinda changes based off of what I'm into in the moment. But today, what I'm doing here is the, is the vitamin C and MSM, and this is a really potent detox. It's quite inexpensive also. And uh, it's a great way to get started and get the energy moving in your body. And I like to mix it with about a quart of water and I like to drink about a full quart in the morning because that gets all my, um, gets all my bowels moving too. So it really kind of gets me up, gets everything flushing out of my system. Now the next thing that I like to do that is one of my favorite things in the world is I like to go out and watch the sunrise and do some sort of practice. And recently I've been doing a five elements Qigong practice and this has been absolutely profound. But th this watching of the sunrise in the morning has been one of the most potent things that I've ever done in my life. And making that into a routine has been one of the things that really, really sets me on track for a beautiful day. Because there's something about the sunrise, when you're watching the sunrise in the morning, that it's like, it's like the celestial bodies are like the sun is teaching you how to wake up with vigor and excitement. And so when I do my practice and I watch the sun, and essentially sun gaze, then what it does is it really gets me inspired and excited about life. And, I, and, and what I do is I, is I try to tune into the energy of the sun and think of myself as like an induction coil. So the vibration of the sun is exciting 
the the like vibration with inside of me and then um, I am inducing myself into the same vibration as the sun as I'm watching it rise and this is just it's it's a beautiful way to get started and it really energizes you now as far as sun gazing goes um, I've done sun gazing where I've looked directly at the sun and done that for long periods of time but what I found is that for me it's a little bit better to look away from the sun. If you are gonna look directly at the sun, what they say, and I'm not gonna, don't quote me on this, but what they say is that it's only when it's coming up off over the horizon and going down over the horizon. You don't wanna look at it while it's you know up high up in the sky. And that's how I did it when I was looking directly at it. And it worked and it was great. But nowadays what I like to do is just look a little bit to the side. Essentially, I wanna get the light into my eyes, but I'm not looking directly at the sun so that I have to, so every time that I blink, I, I see the sun for the next five minutes. Now the Qigong and sun gazing really starts getting me into the vibe. It really starts tuning me in to the frequency that I like to step forth in throughout the day. But then the next step that I take it to is then I go and I meditate for not a long period of time, usually somewhere between 15 and 30 minutes. But you know, there are times that it goes on longer than that and there are times that it's shorter. But essentially, what I'm doing really here is, is I'm priming myself and I'm really getting into the space that I want to be in before I start my day. And then I do a couple practices that I'll describe here in just a little bit. But essentially the whole idea behind this is that the vibration that you move into the day with is basically the tone that you're setting, right? And if you can put yourself in an amazing space in the morning, you have a much better chance of having a great day. So my meditation is really, really powerful to me. It's really important to me. Some of the things that I focus on while meditating is, well, one, just feeling good beyond thought. So what I mean by that is I will focus on just the essences, like just the feeling states. And usually I've just gotten a dose from the sun here so I can tune into the sun energy and I just feel into that energy and I feel what it feels like and it feels like a smile and it feels warm and it feels beautiful and it, I can get to the point where everything I'm looking at feels like it's smiling at me. And that's really the space I like to get into where everything that I look at, everything that I think about is smiling back at me. And when I feel that space, when I feel that joy, then I sit and I bask inside that joy for you know about 10 or 15 minutes or 20 minutes or however long I feel like I need to to really get into that space. And then I can start thinking about different things that I'm gonna do that day as I'm finishing up my meditation and then I bring that smile to the idea of all these things. Now as I finish up my meditation, what I like to do at the end of it is I like to think about the things that I, the tasks that I have for that day and think about the things that are most important to me for that day. And then I like to do a little visualization practice, if you will, regarding those things to kind of prime myself to make that process as smooth as possible. So what I do is I look at it from two different directions. I imagine it going really smoothly and beautifully and me being very grateful for it going smoothly and beautifully. So I imagine my, my vibration being very high and everything just working and it all clicking and everything that I intend to do happening beautifully. And then what I do is I imagine it not going at all like I planned, but I also imagine myself responding to it not going how I planned in a beautiful way and then being very, very grateful that I was able to respond to the unexpected changes in a beautiful way. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically priming myself because I don't necessarily have control over every single thing that's gonna happen. And it's good to intend and visualize positively about the things that you want to experience in the day. Uh, visualize yourself succeeding at it and it going well. But part of the issue with just doing it that way is that if it doesn't go well, then oftentimes you, you get frustrated and it, and it can like ruin your day. So what I visualize is I visualize myself also feeling great and amazing and being grateful for my ability to respond positively to this particular thing that I'm excited about doing or I feel like is really important not working. Because if I can respond positively when something doesn't work, then that's a major success for me because that means that I'm really in control of my own vibration and I'm really being my truest and greatest self regardless of what the circumstances are. And this tool is also great in another way because one of the things that happens is if we set an intention and there's a lot of importance put on that intention, then what can happen is we can develop a fear that we won't be able to succeed at this intention. And that fear can create a gravity towards it not working. If you care a lot, then oftentimes 
the side effect of that is that the fear of not being able to achieve it can start attracting you towards that fear, right? Because it has a charge to it. So what I like to do is discharge this. And I do that by imagining it not working, but then celebrating that also. Celebrating the fact that it didn't work, but I was still able to respond to the experience in a positive way. And by doing that, it kind of discharges it and it makes it so my frame entering into it is more along the lines of like, well, yeah, this is great if it happens and that's going to be beautiful and that's my intention and I can see that. But at the same time, if it doesn't work, then this is a great opportunity for me to grow in my ability to respond to my reality positively regardless of what's happening. So either way, it's going to be a win for me. And by doing this, it discharges the fear and it actually makes it a lot more likely that I'm going to be able to succeed at whatever my intention is. And this is what I like to call couching a big intention inside of a small intention. You have a small intention in this micro existence of having a personality, having desires and having wishes and wanting to do something in the world. And then you have a macro intention of being the grandest expression of love and beauty that you could possibly imagine. That the responding to reality and all the micro experiences and situations like a God responds to it with love and beauty and graciousness regardless of what happens. And so I like to take that big intention and I like to couch it inside the small intention so that while I still have goals that I'm achieving, there's a greater intention that is with me throughout the entire process of achieving those goals that is ushering me into a greater, grander expression of love and beauty regardless of what happens. So that's my morning routine. Hopefully that inspires you if you don't have a morning routine to create one that really supports you to be the kind of person that you wanna be. If you do have a morning routine, I'm really excited to hear what it is. So why don't you go ahead and put your morning routine in the comments so I can explore that and possibly generate some new ideas for myself or anyone else that's reading the comments. So thanks so much for tuning in. This is Patrick Hayes. Like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And I will talk to you next time. One love.